Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about exploring the world with the Urban Observatory. Now ESRI and Richard Saul Wurman, the brains behind the TED Talks, combined with some other good folks to create this Urban Observatory. The idea was, as you see here, that if we can understand trends, patterns, relationships in the geographic and temporal contexts, we can do something about issues, problems in our world today, particularly urban problems of poverty and health and transportation issues, economics, quality of life, and so on. So inside the Urban Observatory, which all you need to browse through is a web browser and an internet connection, so it's super easy to use, if you go to the Urban Observatory, there is an app the Urban Observatory app. Compare facts and live data about multiple cities anywhere, anytime. So let's go ahead and launch that app, which brings us this. We have two simple but powerful things to be able to analyze. Themes, work, movement, people, as you can see on the left side here, and also cities. We have a list of cities. And this isn't just a bunch of cities that a bunch of people in some office somewhere decided to, to, to create and be able to use, but it's also inviting, this site invites cities to contribute their data to so we can all benefit, so we can all analyze data in different places with different variables. So if I'm an educator, for example, or a researcher, and I want to compare senior population, I go to the themes on the left side, and then I'm going to be comparing different senior population, maybe Accra, is one of the cities that I want to do. So, and I want to analyze Accra in the middle. So I push on the middle button. Now I can see that I've got a density of senior population with red dots where seniors are more than 10% of the total in different places. And these are live maps, interactive maps. You can pan around. They're at pretty much the same scale. So I can see right away that Tokyo, the senior population, is much more than Accra in Ghana, right? The population in Accra for seniors is much less because the population pyramid in Ghana and in Accra is more like this, right? You've got a lot of younger people at the bottom of that pyramid. In Tokyo and in much of Japan, it's more like a rectangle. In fact, kind of bowing out at the, at the top end, so you've got a lot more seniors. So the fascinating thing is to be able to look at these. Let's look at one more variable, and then I'm going to turn you loose to have you take a look at cities that you are interested in. So for example, if we look at parks, let's look at parks around at different places around the world. So if we take a look at, let's say, Albuquerque, and then let's look at Anaheim in the middle panel, and let's take a look more of, how about Arlington, Texas in the third panel? So now I'm going to look at parks. The park score shows which areas of a city lie within a short walk of any park, and also which areas are underserved or unserved by a park. So I can see that in different cities, I've got different patterns. And why is that? What kinds of policies are in place? What kinds of natural amenities are in place? So lots of things I can explore. One more thing though, let's go ahead and take a look at transportation and that resulting pattern that has evolved because of cultural geography and physical geography with, with transportation around the world. So in this case, I'm going to look at more in the global sense. I'm going to look at Auckland and how about if I take a look at Bangkok in the middle panel and how about Berlin, Germany on the left side. Berlin left side. Okay, so now I can see the patterns of transportation in different cities around the world and how the pattern reflects the physical geography, rivers, oceans, coastlines, mountains. Auckland is an interesting case because you've got this constraint, right? You've got that narrow part of the North Island where Auckland is built on. And so the, and that and the surrounding mountains and, and ocean, of course, constrain the local transportation to use these northwest to southeast trending highways and mass transit. So you've got a lot of potential for gridlock there in Auckland just because of the physical geography. Berlin being on some sort of low hills and, and 
relatively flat terrain, you've got some areas to spread out in. Another thing we can do is to look at traffic. So these maps show the traffic conditions you can expect at whatever time of day you happen to be examining. In my case, it's a Saturday afternoon, early afternoon. And also pay attention to different, again, physical geography constraints and also the network of roads. So fascinating to be able to look at that. One more thing with the Urban Observatory, you can look at current temperatures. So for example, we've got the AccuWeather data feeding into the Urban Observatory for different cities around the world. So that's, uh, again, fascinating to be able to do that and look at the proximity of the coasts, uh, winter versus summer in the northern versus southern hemisphere, latitude, altitude or elevation, that all matters, of course, and has an impact on current temperatures. So Urban Observatory, Understanding Precedes Action, wonderful tool for teaching and learning space and time relationships running in a web browser from urbanobservatory.org. And thanks to ESRI and the ability to be able to have web mapping and GIS tools at our fingertips that makes this all possible. Thanks for being here.